If humanity and suspended cartoon pianos have anything in common, is their uncanny knack for failure time and time again. Whether it be a New Year's resolution or returning home with the milk, humans don't always accomplish everything they set out to do. But while these abandoned goals can leave weight sets dusty or children with lasting psychological damage, sometimes the goal itself is so ridiculous that it's probably best left in the good old idea box. And in a world where people thought hydrogen airships were a good idea, imagine the zany proposals that didn't make the cut. Now let's take a look at some of the crazy... Is that a flashbang? Now. Uh, the box! It's gone! Mother- They must have tracked our location. T Timmy! What are you doing on your phone? Uh, I'm just browsing iFunny. Okay, we need to talk about that later, but you're on public Wi-Fi! You should be using NordVPN to hide your location. Ugh, that must be how they found us. Who's they? No time. We need that box. This looks like British equipment. Luckily, the UK is one of over 60 countries NordVPN has servers in. Use it to change our location to London. Okay, what now? <laughs> They're Brits. <clears throat> How many miles is it to the royal palace? Actually, it's kilometers. You mean kilometers, we right? Civilized people <laughs> use kilometers. Jerry. Right, Surely, you mean there, go, Timmy. <laughs> Anyway, NordVPN is a fantastic service that protects your personal information while going about online activities. And if you're hesitant, there's a risk-free 30-day money-back guarantee. Head on over to nordvpn.com slash bluejay or use code bluejay for a ridiculously huge discount. Thank you, NordVPN, for sponsoring the video. <laughs> oh, good. So as I was saying, let's take a look at some bonkers canceled projects. The people of 19th century London weren't all that different from us. They face similar day-to-day -day challenges that plague our lives today. But where we lose our keys, they lose their stable boy. Or instead of asking, where can I fit these groceries? They had, where can I fit these thousands of bodies? In the early 1800s, London was frantically searching for a solution for what to do with all their dead. Cemeteries were beginning to find themselves increasingly full. And seeing as how the residents weren't moving out, the lazy fucks, answers were desperately needed. And in 1820, architect Thomas Wilson came up with one such solution. Hey there, chap. That pyramid's rather neat, isn't it? <laughs> You know what would make it better? Five million bodies. At the time, London was going through an Egyptian craze with artifacts pouring in from the land of the Nile, a topic that really deserves a video of its own. Influenced by this popularity, Thomas Wilson proposed the Metropolitan Sepulchre. This pyramid would have towered 94 stories on 18 acres of land, overlooking London on Primrose Hill, serving as a nice little reminder in the sky of your impending doom. You know, in case the air wasn't enough. While most plans featured in this video are rather ridiculous, the Death Pyramid actually wasn't that crazy of an idea. With a capacity of 5 million, it would have stored an equivalent of 1,000 acres of traditional cemetery land. To add to its practicality, the summit was to be used as an astronomical observatory, because all the best research is fueled by the screams of the damned. And what did Wilson plan to do if the pyramid got full? Psh, build a new one. Giza got three. But like all fun things in life, public opinion saw the downfall of the Death Pyramid. This could have something to do with the fact that Wilson claimed, it will teach the living to die and the dying to live forever. But I think Industrial Revolution London already had that lesson down. Furthermore, there were concerns that the sheer weight of the thing would literally crush Primrose Hill. We all know how Londoners like their curves. Ultimately, people preferred a wild and free Primrose Hill, with the opening of multiple garden cemeteries on London's countryside being the final nail in the coffin. <laughs> So unfortunately, the Park Cemetery beat out the Death Pyramid as the go-to burial method. But could you imagine? Mother, I miss Grandpappy. Don't you worry, James. Your grandfather will always be watching over you. In the modern era, many strides have been made towards improving the lives and rights of the LGBT community, resulting in more acceptance of homosexuality in today's culture than ever before. And as with all things, this left the US government with one pressing question. Mm -hmm, but can we weaponize it? In 1994, researchers at Air Force's Wright Laboratory in Ohio set up to do just that, exploring the potential for a gay bomb. <laughs> <laughs> no, not the fun kind. We're talking psychochemical warfare. In a three-page proposal to the Department of Defense, they described how the bomb would disperse a gas over enemy camps that would, quote, cause enemy soldiers to become gay and to have their units break down because all their soldiers became irresistibly attractive to one another. Basically, the idea was to help the enemy combatants make love, not war. S so we can make war. The document acknowledged that no such chemical existed at that point, but promised further research into the little explored world of pheromones and aphrodisiacs should their $7.5 million proposal get approved. The basis for the idea seems to have originated from how copulants were marketed as aphrodisiacs and perfumes and colognes since the 70s. But that remains more in the realm of pseudoscience, seeing as how the claim was based on just some observations of monkey behavior, not quite the definition of a serious or controlled scientific study. Regardless, the proposal made its way to the Pentagon, and I like to imagine it went a little 
something like this. Okay, Corporal, what do you got for me? Proposal for a new nuclear warhead that maximizes radiation damage to farmland. About time, push it forward. The army wants to weaponize honeybees in Iraq, so they- Yeah, yeah, sure, fine. Wright Laboratory gave us this proposal for a gay bomb that- <gasps> Corporal, are you mad? We are the United States of America, for Christ's sake. It is our duty, as the leaders of the free world, to draw the line on what is just and inhumane. Understood, Major. Consider it scrapped. <clears throat> the FBI think they can overthrow Castro using child sleeper agents and doped up spinner dolphins. How fast can they have it done? The Department of Defense scrapped the proposal pretty quickly, and the gay bomb never saw any real development. But I mean, come on. The idea was pretty ridiculous. There's nothing that can just turn any man gay. It's the early 1920s, and America's having a roaring time. They got jazz, that one Fortnite dance, and a stock market that could never get depressing. The Great War may be over, but a great age has just begun. Right, Europe? Oh, right, the war happened here. Spare any change? Ew. Unlike the US, the years immediately following World War I didn't prove fruitful for much of Europe. The continent was experiencing a sharp rise in unemployment, overpopulation, and a looming energy crisis. Noting these issues, German architect Hermann Zorgel sought to kill multiple government drones with one stone, using his continent uniting project, Atlantropa. Now, I know what you're thinking, and no, unfortunately, Atlantropa wasn't a plan for a massive Atlantis themed water park. In fact, quite the opposite. Instead of a large influx of water, the project called for the draining of water. A lot of water. Like a sea's worth. Specifically, Zorgel wanted to partially drain the Mediterranean Sea by building a series of dams. The Mediterranean is naturally evaporative, with water flowing in from the Atlantic. A dam across the Strait of Gibraltar would naturally lower the sea level over time, and Zorgel planned to drop it by up to 200 meters, creating over 660,000 square kilometers of new land for living space. Europe and Africa would unite into a new supercontinent, with all its energy needs being met by the new dam, the construction of which would provide the unemployed masses with work for decades. Decades. The plan initially saw a lot of support from the German public, but not so much so from countries actually on the Mediterranean. This could have something to do with the fact that the fishing villages weren't all that keen on becoming mountain ones, and places like Venice would pretty much lose their entire identity. But come on, ocean views are overrated. Things are great in Germany. Africa wasn't a fan either. Something about giving Europeans easier access to their lands didn't quite sit right with them, but their opinion mattered about as much as a post on Apple's feedback page. Yeah, basically we'd merge together as one continent, and we could build railroads to you guys, making travel extremely convenient. What do you think? I know, great, right? Say, how much concrete do you have? Zorgel later pitched the project to the Nazis after they took over, noting their desire for living space. But they weren't all that interested in the plan. Ah, damn, why bother creating new land when there is all this land nobody is using? What? Of course, Atlantropa had a few small issues that needed some ironing out, such as catastrophic effects on climate, the mass extinction of Mediterranean marine life, and the lack of enough concrete in the world at the time to actually construct the thing. Oh, and there's a small fact that the homes of millions and the power of an entire continent were solely subject to the proper operation of a single dam holding back a literal ocean. Can you imagine the catastrophe if the squirrel from Ice Age stumbled upon it? Zorgel continued to promote his project until his death in 1952, with his beloved Atlantropa losing all its steam with him. But hey, now that the name is open for the taking, I say we try that water park idea. I actually went ahead and took a crack at the design. It's themed after the movie Atlantis The Lost Empire, which features dynamite-wielding Italians, making it objectively the best animated Disney movie. I'm thinking we can build a thing in Poland, because God knows they deserve a break. If a colossal water park can't line up a place that depressing, I don't know what will. Perhaps a gay bomb. Yeah, 10 stars.